play of Maddie Skinner looking to get back to last year's form. Madison Skinner is starting to look like herself again. She is so physical at the net and in the back row and is able to power through pretty much every block in the country. And she's accompanied by Reagan Rutherford, another star senior player who brings so much experience to the team. She can score in so many different ways and just has such great range. But if the Oklahoma Sumers want to be successful, they have to shut them down. And the block that they brought in this season might be able to do that. Oklahoma leads the conference in blocks per set, and Coach talked about how it's something that they've really tried to improve this season. And so if they want to be successful today, the block definitely needs to show up. After Aaron Mansfield took over this program last year, laid the foundation, now all of a sudden they are quickly starting to find their own identity here in year number two. Atop the SEC in blocks per set, Texas in the top thir three as well. It's gonna be a block party tonight, both teams so good in the blocking side, but also have some great offensive weapons. So the net is definitely going to be a battle today. It is always a party inside Gregory Gym in this unique environment for college volleyball. A hostile crowd that Aaron Mansfield welcomes taking on. He knows this Texas coaching staff so well. He himself a Cali kid, just like Jared Elliott. But again, six years at the helm back in Los Angeles at LMU with great success, two NCAA tournaments. He's trying to get Oklahoma to the dance as well. And while we talk about the California kids, Jared Elliott, just a handful of national championships on his resume these days. And now he's got his sights set on maybe 700 wins in his coaching career. But today, Texas, Oklahoma, Longhorns have not lost here at home against Oklahoma in 10 years, 2014, the last time. That's right, and these teams are ready to battle. Texas is coming off of two losses at home, so trying to stop that streak today by beating Oklahoma. Again, Texas has lost their last two home matches, a and and Missouri, back on Friday night. You see, 1994, the last time they lost three straight home matches. They've never lost three straight conference matches at home in a 40-plus year history. Underway in the opening set. Both these teams coming off five set losses against Missouri. Oklahoma a little bit longer hiatus since that outing against the Tigers. Texas a quick turnaround. Stumbling back on Friday night and an early error on the number nine team in the nation will give Oklahoma the opening point. Madison Skinner there just going a little too high trying to challenge the Oklahoma block that, like we said, is definitely going to show up today. Jasmine Ellison, the freshman out of Canada, continues with the serve. And going right at that triple block, Reagan Rutherford, nothing too fancy, dials it down and drops it down. And that's just an experienced play right there. She sees a triple block in front of her and is just able to kind of softly put it over the block instead of trying to power through it. Former national champion at Kentucky. And she was first on the same roster as a Madison Skinner. Boy, our producer, Brandon Rudy, said, let's talk about the blocks. Let's talk about the play of Rutherford and Skinner. And those two seem to have gotten the script. He definitely knows what he's talking about. And those, those players are going to continue to show up tonight in this game. Texas with the early edge here in the opening frame. A big swing at the left pin and a bit too big. The error on Alexis Shelton, last year's second team, all Big 12. One of your returning starters for Oklahoma, one of your leaders last year. She was basically by default a six rotation player. They've added some support around her. They'll go back to her. Skinner. And now back to her day job. Hitting on the outside after moonlighting for a moment, there's the center. Such a great play by Madison Skinner, but look at the coverage on the Texas side. Oklahoma has a big block out there in front of Rutherford, three up, and they're able just to control that ball and then get a nice set up to Skinner. Service continues for Reese Emmerich for the Longhorns. And the Sooners finally find that elusive second point. And Lydia Martin had some experience with the collegiate national team this summer. And coach just talks about how she's grown. That experience really built her confidence. And so she's really been stepping up for this team this year. Yeah, the grad student, a more vocal player out there on the floor. 
But her service will be short-lived. Reagan Rutherford again, preseason all SEC comes through. So a little respite for Rutherford in her place. Back to serve. Kayla Akana. Now in her third year at Texas, after starting off in Lincoln, Nebraska with the Cornhuskers, is Longhorn Steady Eddie back there at the service line. And a big kill from Alexis Shelton, the pride of Charlotte, North Carolina. She has had double-digit kills every single match this year, the ultimate constant at the net offensively for Oklahoma. And just has so much range, able to get past the block and go really sharp. Therese Emmerich was not able to get there. That included 23 kills in the five-setter against Missouri back in Norman. As Texas will put it away. And Skinner just goes right back at her with that sharp cross attack. And that's one of Skinner's best shots right there. She's really good at getting her feet to the ball, going inside of the block, and just crushing it cross court. Grew up just west of Houston, out of Katy, Texas. Looking to guide. The Longhorns to their third straight national championship, something only Penn State has ever done. Akana with the dig. Battle to the left side, it's Jenna Winnis. And such an aggressive play, so much patience by Winnis there. Carlson's coming from across the court with a bump set, but she's able to wait, get her feet there, and just put it right over the block. Super smart play, not being too impatient there, and just putting it where the defense can't get there. Winnis now in year two at Texas. The former Minnesota Golden Gopher really came into her own last year in the Elite Eight against Stanford. But again, Alexis Shelton quickly with the answer at the left side. Shelton averaging 4.25 kills per set on the season. Such an impressive stat line, and she's showing up today. She's not backing down against this Texas block, and she's going to continue to power through them. A double-double her sixth of the year against Missouri. A service error will give Texas the point. Yeah. Chatting this week with Aaron Mansfield, head coach for Oklahoma, just what's been the constant in some of the struggles this year. He talked about side out, opponent hitting percentage, but service errors have also plagued the Sooners when they've come up short. But Jared Elliott knows they are a tough out. Their record, three and six in conference, a little deceptive. That includes a top 20 win over against that other UT and that <laughs> other shade of orange out of Knoxville. Kimoha, Skinner off the mark, and the Sooners back within a couple. And it looks like we're seeing Madison Skinner playing six rotations this game. She's coming out of the backcourt, which is one of her strengths, so we're going to see Carlson set her a lot more from there, which is really going to help the Texas offense. Naya Bunton in for Texas at the net. They'll go to Bunton at the right side, but... Not enough behind it. Gibson with the block and able to put it away. Gibson, the newcomer out of Tennessee. Just like Button, which is a little bit early on that set and was not able to get fully up in the air and get a swing, but great block there by Gibson, just having patience and just putting it right back down on the Texas side. Kimoha with the serve and ace. And such great placement on that serve, dropping it right in between. Akana and Winnis, two of the better passes on this Texas team. It drops there right in front of them, and they're not able to keep it on their side. Sooners serving for the lead. Winnis. That's Bunton defending the middle of that net. Skinner from the back row, denied by Martin. And talking about a great blocking team, Martin there one-on-one -on -one in the middle, knowing that Skinner is so great out of the back row, making a great decision, and just jumping right back in the court. Such a huge block for the Sooners. Second year with Oklahoma, Martin began her time in Lynchburg, Virginia with the Flames of Liberty. And it's Oklahoma in the driver's seat, up a point. Skinner will level things nine apiece. And I love that choice there by Carlson, just going right back to her. The back row attack of Madison Skinner is a big piece of the Texas offense, and so establishing it early, giving Madison some confidence is so important. So great decision there by Carlson. Speaking of Avery Carlson. Finding some fingertips. That's Camille Gibson again. 
She's out of Crossroads, Texas. Right inside of Jenna Winnis is really, really hard to do, and Shelton is a player that can can do it. In Texas's 3-0 run, Shelton with four kills to lead the way for Oklahoma. Quickly over that left pin, sent over by Gibson. Wenis will return the favor. Finding fingertips, Skinner keeps it alive. The sixth rotation player. Uh, Texas can't keep it inside the antenna. But look at the defense from Madison Skinner back there, just poking her arm out. She's definitely learning a thing or two from Emma Halter. So service continues for Shelton, the junior. Jenna Winnis gets on top of that one. And it's Oklahoma now back to a two-point lead. Timeout, Jared Elliott and the Longhorns. A reminder, tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, right here on the SEC Network, we'll have our latest episode of True South. John T. Edge travels to the upstate region of South Carolina with author George Singleton. The flea market in Pickens to eat chili dogs at Holmes Hot Dogs in Spartanburg and to Saxon's Hot Dogs in Abbeville. It's going to be another great show. Well, for Oklahoma, take a look at some strides they've made already in year two under the leadership of head coach Aaron Mansfield, including already a top 25 win. SWB audio Tennessee captured, not SWB. registered. And their record in the SEC, three and six, I don't think really tells much about this team. I think this team is super competitive. They have a lot of talent. They're working well together. Like we said, they lead the SEC in blocks per set. And so even though their record might not show it, they're definitely a competitive team who showed up this season in the SEC. You see that last nugget, their first ranked win since they were here against then number two Texas in 2014. Before Texas lost to AM a little over a week ago, that was Texas's last in-conference loss here at home. 79 matches between that loss to Oklahoma and the loss this past month to the Aggies. And I think that shows just the competitive nature of the SEC. All of these teams are so talented, so competitive, can come into any gym and really put on a show. And both Texas A&M and Mizzou were able to do that, and Oklahoma's in here today to try to do the same thing. So coming out of the timeout called by Texas as we're flirting with the red zone, K.J. Burgess will come on for Hannah Fifner up at the net. Service continues with Alexis Shelton. Skinner comes floating in from the back row. And just can't keep that one alive. 19-16, Oklahoma with its largest advantage here early. And the Sooners doing a really great job of containing Madison Skinner's back row attack. It's one of her most efficient attacks, and they've been able to either dig or kind of force some errors from her already in the set. And only Shelton can end her own service in that 4-0 run for Oklahoma. And this is an important part of this match for Texas. They are down here, too, in the first set. And they need to find a way to power through and kind of go in a run here. The libero Emma Halter, preseason all SEC. Waiting for the green SWB light. audio capture, not like registered. Subbed in Devin Kahawai as a blocking sub, so there's no setter on the court. We'll probably see Kaylee Akana step into set if needed. Saw Devin with four blocks on Friday against Missouri. They'll go around that block. Wenis kept alive on that back row by Thompson. Set from Akana, and too tight for Kahawai to be able to do much with it. And she will come out for Avery Carlson, the former Baylor Bear. So Oklahoma five points away from, well, it wouldn't be surprising the way that this year in college volleyball has gone. That's right, it's the year of upsets and the year of just so much talent across the board. And that's what makes college volleyball so exciting right now. Gibson will get the kill. 
The folks running the NCAA volleyball social media this year just have a template that has in all bold letters upset and then whatever happens to be the match of the day tends to fall into that column. That's right. It's been so exciting to see just so many teams rise to the occasion and there's definitely many, many more to come. So final timeout, this opening set for Jared Elliott in Texas. They trail by four and look after Miami gave Texas their first loss this year at Gregory Gym. They showed it wasn't a fluke. They knocked off Stanford in five sets. Of course, uh, that wasn't the only upset this year, as uh, we would see in Big Ten play, Nebraska and Wisconsin, a great top 10 battle back on Friday. Wisconsin was held under 100 in terms of hitting percentage, their worst of the year against the Cornhuskers. And of course, uh, Missouri was here in Austin back on Friday, handing the Longhorns their second straight home loss here at Gregory Gym. And what's so cool to see is teams are coming in to their opponents' gyms and beating them. Like we see SWB going to the audio market, captured, Missouri not registered. Winning. These teams are not backing down. They're excited to play in front of their opponents' home crowds and potentially take them down. And again, you take a look at the dominance at Gregory Gym over the last decade and a half. They were 117 and one. Now 117 and three and conference matches here at home with those losses to AM and Missouri. Such a crazy time in college volleyball, especially for this Texas team. They're so used to kind of rolling through the conference, but now coming into the SEC, there's so much more competition. There's so much more talent. So they kind of have to be ready every single night. Missouri on Friday, a little bit of a homecoming, had the benefit of a couple of former Texas setters. Uh, one still active and the other one on the coaching staff. That's right. They definitely were both very excited to get to come into this gym again and play and then to come out on top. Can Oklahoma be the first to 25 here in the opening set? They're four points away. Back to Gibson and unable to find the angle to keep it in. And Texas can't just swap points back and forth here. They need to go on a run with Avery Carlson back to serve. And when you got, want to go on a run, Avery Carlson is one of the better servers on the team to do that. She's been serving late in games a lot this season and been really successful from the service line. Former Big 12 freshman of the year, her time at Baylor. She was the highest recruit ever for that Baylor volleyball program, joining Texas this year. Battle at the right pin, won by the double block, anchored by Gibson and Martin for Oklahoma. Such a great move there by the Oklahoma block. They knew the ball was going to go back to Rutherford because she's been so successful so far this season, and they just gave her absolutely zero space to work with right there. Sooners potentially three points away. Back to Chamberlain, the setter to serve. SWB audio captured, not registered. Winnis. Kimoha with the set. And just pure power on that right arm of Geisberger. Such a powerful arm over there. And Coach talks about how much he loves coaching her. She's just such a great player, such a great teammate who shows up every single day. So great to see her successful on the right pin. He has successfully recruited her twice now. That's right. At LMU for four years. And now her final campaign with Oklahoma. Sent back over by Bunton. Gibson finds fingertips. Skinner on the back row keeps it alive. A little punctuation from Reagan Rutherford to keep Texas in the hunt here in set number one, back within four. And that's one of her best shots, just getting up at the net and cutting it super, super sharp. The defense is almost never there. They try to trust the block on that one. So she only had one block in front of her and was able to just crank it cross court. Stepping in this year for one Molly Phillips. Doing a nice jump. Sooners have set point within reach here. And what a great play there by Peyton Chamberlain. She had three of her attackers in front of her, one running a quick tempo in front, one running a shoot, and one running the outside ball. So made it really, really hard on the Texas block to decide who to jump with. And it's a really great play late in this set by Chamberlain. The freshman Ellison on the big stage looking to close out set number one. 
It'll still be set point. No room for error here in rally scoring for Texas. As Emmerich will come back in to serve for the Longhorns. SWV audio capture not registered. And the freshman with the let serve still playable for Oklahoma. Defense comes through. It's Maddie Skinner. And the Texas team always shows up late in sets, so not surprised that they had such a solid block there up on Geisberger. And look at the excitement after this block. They're still in it. Look at Ames just pumping her fist. I love to see freshmen get super excited like this. Skinner, the senior, Ames, the freshman combined to keep Texas here in set one. It is still set point. Sooners, though, want to talk it over as they will use their first time out here in the opening front. I think we all knew that Oklahoma was going to come in today ready to play. And so it's going to be interesting to see how Texas responds right here and if they're able to overcome them in this first set. Again, you take a look at where these two teams check in in conference play. Texas just shy of three blocks per matchup. It is still set point for Oklahoma, 24-21 now. And speaking about the block, both teams do a great job of stuff blocking the ball, but they're also just touching the ball really, really well. And so creating free ball situations, not slowing the ball down for their defense. It's not all about stuffing the ball every single time, but just being in the right spot, funneling the ball to the defense and getting great block touches, which both teams are doing a great job of doing. We talk about this being the home stretch of the first year for Texas and Oklahoma and the SEC, some scheduling quirks. Texas had a long break before matching up against Missouri on Friday. Sooners have not played this week until today, well rested, but Texas is in the midst of a stretch of five matches in 10 days. It is a gauntlet. Now, mind you, after today, they hit the road to be road warriors for their next four matches. The SEC has definitely not been very, very kind to Texas coming into the SEC in their first year. But it's all about SWB audio games. capture, really important not registered. To get to the end of the season in December at their highest level. Again, set point still for Oklahoma. Good serve from Reese Emmerich. Sooners will take the opening set here in Austin. Five kills from Shelton, just such an impressive player. Expected it to go to her to end the set right there. The Red River rivalry heating up on this Sunday afternoon in the state capital of Texas. Oklahoma looking for their first win here in over a decade. For the game and her teammates just love to play with her. Well on her way to a seventh double-double on the season. Already five kills and five digs. And you see hitting pretty cleanly, th 300 here early on. That's right. The Texas block has not found a way to slow her down yet. And she's going to continue to power through them, find ways to score around the block. So Texas needs to find a way to slow her down if they want to be successful in this second set. Skinner and Rutherford with five kills apiece. Reagan Rutherford hitting 571 so far in her opportunity. SWB audio capture Texas not registered. 114 compared to Oklahoma's 273 in that opening set. And I think that's what Texas' downfall was in the first set, was just their offense. They weren't able to find ways to score. They were making too many errors. And I definitely think that's what Coach David Hunt, Jared Elliott, Eric Sullivan were talking about in the huddle in between sets one and two. Great to have you with us. Lincoln Rose along with NCAA Woman of the Year, Logan Eggleston. That uh, bookshelf with all the awards has to be pretty cramped. <laughs> As Jenna Winnis, her second year with Texas, back to serve to get things started here in set number two. And Oklahoma will take their first point once again. And a service error to start the game, not always the best, but Jared Elliott definitely talks about the importance of serving aggressively. So sometimes that comes with errors. You got to get a team like Oklahoma out of system. Sooners went 4-14 four in their final year in the Big 12 last year, have not been back to the NCAA tournament since 2019. Big part of looking to change things in the leadership position with head coach Aaron Mansfield, who's doing a lot of the right things early on. Texas able to find their opening point here. In set number two. Talking about the right things, that set by Avery Carlson, so good. 
The middle blocker stayed there in the middle with Singletary, and so Reagan Rutherford had one block up and was able to power through cross court. Avery doesn't have many bad options out there to go to. That's right. When you're setting on the Texas team, you can pretty much set anyone and be successful. And after we've talked about the strength, that time Geisberger using her noggin, outsmarting Texas at the pin. That's right. And then Peyton Chamberlain there just running forward. Everyone expected the ball to go straight up to the outside, but pushing it back there to Geisberger. Really smart play by the setter. All right, let's see if Oklahoma can capitalize on that win in set one and carry it on. SWB audio capture, frame. not registered. With that left arm of Rutherford, her seventh kill now. Now that they're in a 5-1, I'm expecting to see Rutherford become a bigger part of the Texas offense. Like we said, in the open, she can hit cross, she can hit line, she can go short. She has so many tools in her toolbox and just shows the experience that she has. She has both of Texas's points, seven kills now. Both of the points here in set two. Akana with the serve. The return from Burgess, and Texas will not be able to return the favor. This Oklahoma offense has been pretty balanced so far in this game. They've been going to their middles a lot, going to their opposite, their outsides. Everyone's up and ready, and Chamberlain's just running such a balanced offense so far. And Shelton so valuable on that back row in the attack and has the ace. And Texas has three DSs back row right now in Emma Halter, Reese Emmerich, and Kayleigh Akana. And so rare that you see a service error when you have three ball control players back there. And Shelton off the mark, looking to go to a similar spot where she found the ace the last time. Able to laugh it off. That's right, it happens sometimes. You try to go for it a little too hard. And He's kind of got to move on, on to the next play. It's a lot of national championships between those two people on your shot there. Out. Skinner with the service here. 5-3, Oklahoma. So we'll see Mariana Singletary officially come on and then off for the libero Emma Halter on that back row to try to shore things up. Kimoha with the serve. SWB audio capture, not registered. Technically able to put it away. And a great decision there by Carlson. She's running forward and just able to give it perfectly to Skinner in the back row. And just look how high Skinner gets up. She can go both ways there. She can power through the block. Such an impressive back row attacker. Probably one of the best in the college game right now. An ace for Texas. And just like that, the deficit erased, courtesy of Emma Halter. And Halter's one of the better servers on this team. That is her 22nd serve error of the season, service ace of the season, my apologies, and just such a great server. From the back row, great dig from Akana. Kimoha to Gibson. Into that block on the right side of Oklahoma. And the Sooners back ahead, 6-5. And just the defense in that play. Lots of one-arm digs. Kayla Akana just scooping it up perfectly there for Avery Carlson. But a great block on the Oklahoma side. They're so good at reading the Texas offense and getting in front and over the net. And Peyton Chamberlain, the former state champion in 6A at Byron Nelson High School. Skinner goes right at Shelton. Seems like Carlson's figured it out. Whenever Texas needs a point, they go right to Skinner on the back row attack. It's one of her best. And that's such an impressive swing over the block of two pretty good blockers on the Oklahoma side. Avery Carlson with the serve. Free ball for the Longhorns. No need. And a great dig by Chamberlain. SWB a audio bit, capture, a capture not registered. Over on their side, but very close to inbounds. I love how Madison Skinner gets there and is very confident and loud that the ball's out. So the service continues for Avery Carlson. 
the three-time state champion at that powerhouse Lovejoy High School, the Leopards. An ace for Carlson. So she went to high school with Kali Kimoha, same high school that produced one Ebony Wanabu back in the day. Another look at the ace. So much excitement there on the Texas side. The gym is definitely feeling it. Texas matches its largest lead and now eclipses its best lead from that first set. They're up by three. And the Texas side doing such a great job from the service line, attacking the front row outside hitter, trying to get Gibson out of system and being pretty successful in producing some aces instead. It's a 4-0 run for the Longhorns, and here's another helping of Avery Carlson. One more to get it over from Skinner. And right down the drag, Texas with the dig to keep the point alive. Oklahoma thought they had it. Halter, everybody on their feet here at Gregory Gym. Are they able to tool the block? The point will fall to Oklahoma. Might have been one of the longest points we've had today, but just such great defense and coverage on both sides of the net. It's so exciting to see. I know the fans in here are loving it. They're all on their feet getting excited. Sooners thought they had that point. About 10 seconds earlier. <laughs> they come away with it back within two. Jasmine Ellison. Set from Carlson to Rutherford. And salvage by SWB Chamberlain audio capture ball. not registered. And a laser from Reagan Rutherford. She's got nine kills already. And it's taken her a little bit this season to come into her own, but she's started, finally starting to play like she did at Kentucky. Such a strong attacker and able to power through that three block in front of her. No, ma'am. Singletary says we're all out of candy. And that's why she continues to be named Defensive Player of the Week. She is a wall at the net, does such a great job reading the other side and just being over. And it's hard to get a class of Bach of Singletary and Skinner at the net. Don't come knocking on my door again. <laughs> and again, the consistency of Shelton getting Oklahoma back on track. That's right, whenever Oklahoma needs to score, they go to Shelton. They trust her so much. She's such an improved player at the net and they continue to set her balls when they need to score. The double block there waiting for Skinner at the left pin. Martin. It's not just your three-time SEC Defensive Player of the Week. She's got an offensive repertoire as well. She can do it all. She's offensive, she's defensive. But one thing about Marty Singletary is she can hit the ball hard. It's really hard for defense to even dig the ball if it's coming at them. She can just power through pretty much anyone on the other side of the court. Jared Elliott says she's got the best arm he's had at middle blocker. And that is saying something here on the 40 acres. Texas stringing points together. It's the Sooners calling a timeout. The Longhorns with their biggest advantage so far. And the Texas SWB serve, and audio capture we'll not registered. Oklahoma out of system and off the court. And against Missouri hit 455. I thought that was a positive thing to say about her until saw she's been flirting with uh, 670 at points That's early right. in this one. She continues just to elevate her game. It's so impressive. And again, SWB Oklahoma audio capture not registered. Game. Alexis Shelton still going to work here on the road. And she's a player that just takes risks. That ball wasn't set perfectly, but she still goes up and takes such a big swing, and it really pays off for her. She's got two kills, no digs here in the second set after five and five in the opening frame that they captured 25-21. Avery Skinner knows exactly where she is on that back line. Knew that ball was going to sail long. That's right. I think the Sooners are trying to do a little bit of what Texas was doing earlier, just targeting that front row outside, Madison Skinner right there, trying to make her pass the ball so that it's harder for her to get up and attack. And part of the Hawaiian pipeline for Texas 
the serve for Akana. Right down the line. And every microphone we've got picks up that swing from Shelton. That's right, there's just so much power behind that swing. And really smart by her going over the block of Avery Carlson, more of an undersized blocker compared to others on the Texas team. And really smart going right over top. Kayla kind of just not able to dig that ball. Carlson to Skinner off the tape. This time goes to Ames. Aiden Ames, the freshman from Prosper. Her first kill of the day, but such an impressive freshman. She doesn't play like a freshman. She's very calm and composed, has a, such a huge high volleyball IQ, and been really impressive for Jared Elliott this season so far. Showed up for her first semester in college as perhaps the most complete freshman middle blocker he has ever had. Maddie Skinner with her second ace today. And again, Madison Skinner is so valuable from the service line. It's so great to see her back out there. SWV audio nice capture not registered. Really to control. Got to watch her sister wear the red, white, and blue this summer. And the service error will give Oklahoma its 11th point. Where she and Avery first won that national championship together in Lexington, Kentucky, at the expense of uh, a future national player of the year. <laughs> Winnis into the block. Oh, and a dump from Carlson. Oklahoma ready. Gibson denied by Ames. And such great hands at the net there by Ames. The ball is coming over nice and high, but she just powers it right back down. And the Oklahoma defense just can't cover that ball. She's just so high up and just able to grab that ball and control it on her. A couple of freshmen on either side of the net here on this big stage. Ames prevails that time. The serve from Halter is long. This is a big break for Oklahoma right here. See, they can go in a run from the service line get Texas out of system and kind of get back into the second set. Took that first set, 25-21. Chamberlain, Akana. And again, bad angle from Geisberger. A little bit low of a set there, but just able to get up and use the hands of the block to her advantage. Jenna Winters was right there in front yep. of her, and she was able to power through those fingers. Able to find some fingertips as Oklahoma claims the point within four. So serve continues for Peyton Chamberlain. Oh, and a great pancake, or was it? SWB audio oh, capture, not registered. Let's see if this is our first challenge of the match. It is. Aaron Mansfield will grab that laminated green rectangle. He believes this should be a redo. Mohas seemed pretty confident that that ball was up. She immediately looked at her coach. Texas! So at the moment, 18-13 Texas from our broadcast vantage point. Kimoha, oh yeah. That seems conclusive. I have to agree, and when it comes to balls like that, her full hand has to be underneath the ball, and it, it looks like it was. There was no part of the ball that touched the floor at all. So from our perspective. She started at Allen High School her first couple years, then finished at Lovejoy, part of a 5A state championship squad with Avery Carlson. And again, right hand, is it completely under that ball? Be hard to imagine that ball got any court there. We'll see uh, if that's good enough to prevail. Coaches did pretty well on Friday night here, both Missouri and Texas on their challenges. Those challenges, though, were addressed a lot quicker than we're seeing this one. Let's see if we see a couple thumbs in the air for a replay. 
If the pancake was good, take the point off the board and we'll replay the point. And I love how calm Kimoha was there. She she knew she got the ball up. She stood up immediately, looked at her coach, pointed to the green guard, and was like, let's challenge that play. Today is her 101st appearance for Oklahoma. It's her 101st start. And as reliable as anybody in that program's history, the service error from Chamberlain. SWB audio captured, not done. registered. See if Carlson can help Texas close out this second set to pull even one set apiece. Back set right side, denied by Wenis. Followed up with the block from Singletary. A wall at the net. Mariana Singletary just so high up, so pressed over. It's really hard for outside hitters when the ball is that high to see the block. And they just kind of swing for it, but Mariana Singletary is always there. First player in SEC history to win three straight Defensive Player of the Week honors. That's how she began her October as she forces Oklahoma to burn its final timeout of this second set. And Singletary waited her turn here at Texas. She didn't play her first two seasons, but got to play under an amazing player, Asia O'Neal, who has really taught her so much about her game. And Singletary talks about playing underneath Asia has made her a great player. Has grown this year, both physically and you see Eric Sullivan right now leading that huddle. Jared Elliott's top assistant. A lot of these players for Halloween opted to dress up as him by simply adding a little Olympic rings tattoo on their right bicep. That's right, each of the Texas coaches has their thing and Eric Sullivan, the first liber Olympic libero for the men's USA team. So he's pretty proud of it. He's pretty proud of that tattoo. And so it's kind of funny that they were able to, to show it off for him. Not the only coach here today who wore the red, white and blue and wore the libero top is after him. Uh, we would see for a couple of years that Aaron Mansfield filled that role for the United States. Again, these two coaching staffs know each other so well. Lots of respect for one another. SWB audio uh, captured, not registered. Before he took over at Oklahoma, he was already checking out how Jared Elliott ran a program here in Austin. And Gregory Jim, one of the unique environments here in college volleyball. Texas serving 19-13 down a set. And 19-14 with the kill for Geisberger. As pounding out the dribble, Ellison to serve. Fourteen, Texas five points away. And Reagan Rutherford so good, so impressive, not always taking the hardest swing in the world, but just placing it right over the block where the defense can't get there. She was twice all SEC in her time at Kentucky. And the whip from Shelton wanted it a little bit too much. The air and Texas four points away from tying up this match one set apiece. And Shelton just trying to be a little bit too aggressive there on that ball and hits it right out of bounds. Kimoha with the serve receive. And the service of Texas will quickly come to an end. Geisberger will collect another kill. And Chamberlain again just doing such a great job from a setting perspective. Had two players running behind her and made it really hard on the Texas block to make a decision and gave Geisberger so much line to work with. Eight kills tied for the team lead right now. Kari Geisberger hitting four. SWB audio captured, not registered. And Skinner is wide. So that door, that window right now, still open for Oklahoma. But for how long? This is the time where Oklahoma has to put their foot on the gas and find ways to go on runs and force Texas errors. 
Whitney Wallace from a volleyball family with some ties of its own to Jared Elliott. Able to find fingertips on the way out. It's another kill for Shelton, her ninth. And the Sooners are slowly creeping back into this game one at a time. Great timeout call here by Elliott. Slow, slow it down for his team. First timeout of the second set for Jared Elliott. Longhorn still with a four-point lead. More importantly, perhaps four points away from tying up this match. Well, of course, Read and React, hosted by Cole Kublik and Roman Harper each week. They'll take a look back at the biggest plays, players, and games from the weekend. Tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here. You can find it on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. So we talk about the reunion of former Loyola Marymount head coach Aaron Mansfield and his former All-American back in La La Land, Kari Geisberger, who's been a big part of the battle of the fight being shown today for Oklahoma with her eight kills so far. And Geisberger, this is actually her first year playing opposite. She's used to playing outside, but when she came on to this team, coach told her, we want you on the opposite. We want you on the court, and she was happy to do it. She just always shows up with a smile, such a great teammate, such a great player to coach, and so it's nice to see her successful here today. Adding some defense, working on her blocking still, but SWB audio capture not registered. Oklahoma pushed those Tigers to a fifth set. Texas has no interest in this one going five. They want to rattle off wins in set two, three, and four. They've been to that fifth set four times this year, had the Longhorns. They are 0 for 4, including their last two losses here at home. In fact, all three of their losses here at home this year have been in five sets. This is after Texas last year was a perfect 3 and 0 when going the distance. And Oklahoma took set one, 25-21. Texas trying to claw back set two, and that'll help inch them along a little closer here in the second front. And a risky shot there by Rutherford going into the block, but confident that she could use it to her advantage to get the ball out of bounds. Shelton was right there, used her hands, and just wasn't able to force it back into the court. Reagan has already matched the 11 kills she had in five sets against Missouri on Friday. Match high 11 so far today. Geisberger dials it down. Skinner able to keep it alive. You know it's coming, but Alexis Shelton continues to find success. She's got 10 kills. And she's just such a great player, both in system and out of system. This ball came from the libero. She waited on it and just able to get right inside of freshman Aiden Ames right there and crush the ball cross court. She's already just two dig shy of a double-double today against number nine, Texas. Skinner on the serve receive. And as Rutherford sends it back over. Into the block that time, denied by Rutherford. They'll go again. This time underneath it. Again, Emmerich kept the point alive, but for not much longer, Oklahoma still in business, back within three. Oklahoma is here to play. There is so much SWB going on in that play. audio capture not right registered. Game, but still gets over and helps on that triple block right in front of Madison Skinner. KJ Burgess in the middle of that block sandwich. Carlson kept it alive, keeping it out of the net. Let's see, number 12 for Oklahoma. Her name, Alexis Shelton. 11 kills. And it's Oklahoma back within two, and Jared Elliott now uses his final timeout. Neither head coach has a timeout left here. That tells you what kind of set it has been so far. It's back and forth, and Oklahoma is showing up, especially Alexis Shelton. She's been so impressive on the outside, and I think had about three kills in the last three points, if I can remember right. They continue to go back to her. She continues to show up for this team, as she has all season. So we're going to see a lot more sets go to her at the end of this set. Oklahoma on a 3-0 run, still with work to do if they are going to take a two-set-to-none lead. And, I mean, you just see how stressed out they are in this hostile environment. <laughs> Red River rivalry against number nine, Texas. Again, some of the talking points for your announcers here today. Oklahoma's last win back in 2014. 
Texas, that's the more notable. Again, trying to avoid three straight home losses since 1994. The last time they lost three conference home matches at all was 2003. They have never lost three home conference matches in a row. This will be a big test for Texas right now is how they show up after this timeout because Oklahoma is not going to go away. That player right there, Alexis Shelton, is going to continue to take big swings. And it's going to be interesting to see how Texas responds if they're able to slow down the Oklahoma offense. The SEC schedule, you play everybody once, but there are two teams that you play twice for Texas appropriately. It's the Aggies and the Sooners. You wouldn't have it any other way. SWB so audio Texas captured, not registered. Wrap up their four-match road swing coming up this month on the 22nd. And the Sooners have rattled off three straight points. The Sooners have rattled off four straight points. And they're back within one. And a great response there by Sidney Thompson from the service line after a timeout. It's always stressful to serve after a timeout late in a set, but does this does such a great job of putting the ball on Madison Skinner. The defensive specialist Thompson has earned more and more playing time the last five or six matches with the ace there. Ames. They give Kimoha benefit of the doubt that she got underneath that one. Skinner at the left pin. And just misreading that ball, thought they might have to go a couple rows deep into the Hellraisers. Some of those conference championships helped Texas out right there with that banner. Success breeds success. That's right, I like the sound of that. Yeah, those banners are in play as long as they stay on your side of the net. You're to blame for some of those. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Five national championships and way too many trips to the national semifinals to count without using your toes. Akana, Texas, two points away from taking step two. 23-22, 12th kill from Shelton on the match. And Shelton's going to find a way to score. Even when the block is up in front of her, she maybe missed hit that ball a little bit off speed, but always finds a way to find the court. All right, so in to serve, critical moment. It's Ireland McNeese, first time we've seen her today. Both of her parents, college volleyball players at Cal State Northridge, where Jared Elliott wrapped up his bachelor's degree. Skinner into the block. Oklahoma SWB audio capture, not registered. And Oklahoma is just rising to the occasion here. They know the ball is going to Skinner, and so having three blocks up on her is so, so important right now. And it's something that a lot of college programs don't do, so I don't think Texas has seen it much this season. Serve from McNeese, an ace. Set point for Oklahoma. Looking to go up two sets to none. And this Oklahoma team just has so much joy. They're so excited to be in this situation at Texas. And it's been really impressive to see how they've come back in this set. Had not claimed a ranked win in a decade before beating Tennessee earlier this year. And we are destined for extra points. Skinner takes set point off the table. Skinner already with two aces this game. She's got to be good for the server slide right here. They got to keep the ball in play, be aggressive at the same time, try to get Oklahoma out of system. A critical set two. Set point again for Oklahoma. A huge break here for Oklahoma with that service error from Madison Skinner. As now Kimoha will have the serve. Some last minute instructions from her head coach. Fifth year starting libero. Second generation sooner. Skinner back row. As Alexis Shelton probably could have handled that ball, but the respect for what Skinner's capable of probably psyched her out as much as anything. And when you need to score, you go to Skinner, and she's so impressive. And the OU defense was there, was ready, but sometimes it's more important to protect your face. SWB audio capture, not registered. Carries over. 
Gibson's long with the air. It'll be set point for the first time today for Texas. And a great start to that play from Emma Halter. Just a really good serve, taking the middle, forcing Oklahoma out of system. Now it's time for the Sooners to show their composure. Texas takes set two. What a battle here in the Red River rivalry. Definitely a battle, but great job by Emma Halter there at the end of the set, being so good and consistent with her serve. That's what kept Texas in this game. They're getting a little nervy for the fans who have witnessed Texas with some rare hiccups here at home. Texas had a few hiccups like you mentioned, and coming back in the second set, their block is showing up, their serves are showing up, but especially at the net, that's what's gonna set Texas apart in these next few sets, if they can be aggressive at the net and overcome the Texas, or the Oklahoma offense. Lincoln Rose, Logan Eggleston with you, along with our SEC Network Plus crew, as this is the 68th all-time meeting between these two programs. Oklahoma of those 68 has won SWB audio capture not registered. Today, I think. That is what they are up against today against nationally ranked Texas, your back-to-back -back national champions. Longhorns, of course, if you followed the Longhorns, it's not as simple as uh, rinse and repeat. Jared Elliott's last two titles here, completely different journeys. Last year, perhaps even more rewarding than the year prior, and this year, a journey of its own as well if Texas can get back to the promised land. That's right, they're starting to look more like the Texas team from last year, just coming into their own. They're now running a 5-1 this game. Players are stepping up, playing like themselves, and it's all about peaking at the right time at the end of season. And so they're working through some things so far this season and hoping to come out on top in the next few weeks. 24th year at the helm of Texas for Jared Elliott. A program with five national championships, three of them under his guidance. As Jasmine Ellison, again the freshman, to serve. And Singletary looking for her second kill of the match. Oklahoma's claimed the first point each of the first two sets so far. Skinner sees that one still playable. Shelton sends it back over. Rutherford denied. Texas keeps it playable. And a touch off Texas will give Oklahoma, again, the early advantage. And so impressive in that play is the amount of coverage on both sides. Both teams know that the opposite team can block really, really well. And so they're in there ready. Their, play, their hitters can trust them. They can take big swings and know that the defense behind them is going to help them out. Texas took set two on a 3-0 run where they were exposed to a set point for Oklahoma, tied it up, then took it for their own. As we're level SWB one, one audio capture, not registered. As Texas on the board here in this third set. And Reese Emmerich. Kari Geisberger will add to her resume. Now her ninth kill of the match, hitting 467. Martin. Skinner with her second opportunity. Oklahoma's had the answer each time. As Halter able to patrol that back row. And that one off a pin from Oklahoma, the air. I still love how Shelton's taking a swing at that ball. It's off the net, but she still has to be aggressive here against a team like Texas. She's got the match high, 13 kills today, nine digs. Five of them in that first set that they won, 25-21. Akana to serve. And she's from Hawaii. That's where Jared Elliott spent half of his playing career in college. Akana calls everybody off, sends it back over. 
Big right swing, but an even better dig from Emmerich. Kept the point playable for a moment, but the Sooners will claim it up 3-2. And the Texas Littles are so impressive, just so scrappy on the floor. Unable to control that ball, but just so SWB great. SWB audio right. capture, not registered. That was Logan who called you Littles. <laughs> but little to me. Like Younger. Ames sure. with the slide, denied by the woman who's doing a little bit of everything and a lot of some things, Alexis Shelton. That's right, and Coach talked about how she's really been perfecting her craft all around game, not just attacking, but becoming a better blocker, becoming a better off blocker defender in the back row, doing everything, and it's, it's really showing up today. Again, today is her 23rd straight match in double digit kills. Tight at the net, the turnaround, little pirouette from Avery Carlson on the dump. And it's rare this season that we're seeing Texas setters up at the net, so Oklahoma just not ready for that ball, but smart play by Avery Carlson going up, kind of disguising it and popping it right over the net. Uh, Texas still trailing Oklahoma by one. Skinner with the serve. And Shelton able to find the hardwood. And it's tough to have Avery Carlson up there against Shelton. Shelton's such an aggressive attacker and is able to go over any block. And Carlson's a little bit undersized, smaller than some of the other blockers on the Texas side, and she's Definitely abusing Carlson's block right now. Point, Texas. Gift. Point number four to the Longhorns. Again, yeah, the pride of Indianapolis, Indiana, Emma Halter. She was all tournament team last year in the national championship run. An ace for Halter. SWB audio capture, Halter not registered. It's just so flat, it floats so well, and it's really hard for passers to control it. Just a junior. Well, that's a quick opportunity to dial up KJ Burgess, but the Longhorns were ready. And Jenna Wynn is giving a piece of that, doing a really good job of staying neutral, staying in there beside Barr and a single Terry, helping out on that block there in the middle. Gibson. Back over to Oklahoma on the free ball, and they're able to put it away. It's Burgess making no mistake. Burgess so aggressive there on that ball. She did not give Texas any opportunities to dig that. She put it straight down into single Terry, and she's unable to control the ball. It's her first year since coming over from Utah, back in her home state. Former high school All-American and three-time state champion in Utah. And this will be out of the reach. Unrecoverable for Shelton and the Sooners. Texas all of a sudden finds themselves ahead 7-6. It's important for Texas to go on runs early in this game so they're not having to kind of crawl back at the end of the sets. Carlson. Back row gives Wenis a good shot at the block there. Gibson able to clean things up at the left pin. And what an impressive play there. Starts out with a great coverage by Martin. Just sticks her hands out there and hits her perfectly. And then Shelton comes in, gives a perfect set to her outside hitter, Gibson, and she just crushes that ball. Really, really great play there on the Oklahoma side. Really high ceiling for her, and with as well as she can jump, you need a high ceiling. Back row, Maddie Skinner thought she got the touch on the back row. Initially, they say no. So an error on Skinner. SWB audio so capture, not row, registered. Already has four errors out of the back row today. That would be her fourth, and so interesting to see if Carlson will go back to her. No challenge from Texas. Oklahoma up 8-7. Back on track, Mariana Singletary. And this play is something that makes Carlson such a great setter. She's almost at the 10-foot line and still able to set Mariana Singletary a pretty perfect ball in the middle of the court.
We are tied at a Oklahoma edges back ahead. 15th kill from Alexis Shelton. And such a great angle there, going so sharp in front of Emma Halter, who's already pretty, pretty close there to the net. Really impressive shot there by Shelton. Her teammate Jasmine Ellison with the serve. Singletary able to sneak that between the block and the net. The point for Texas, 9-9. Texas denying Geisberger at the net. That may have taken a little too long to develop as they go from one pin to the other. And Geisberger has done a great job hitting that line, but Texas knows that now. So Madison is going to get out, presses over the net, and just shuts her down with that line shot. Shelton denied. No, ma'am. Rutherford this time with the block. SWB audio capture not registered. Texas to just understand what Oklahoma is doing well and covering up those spots. Sheldon's been going cross court and Reagan Rutherford just dropped that inside hand and took that shot away. I think this is the largest lead for Texas. Just like that, back within one, that'll end a 3-0 run from the Longhorns. It took extra points, but 27-25, Texas found its first set victory of the day. Each team with one set in its back pocket, Aiden Ames. And Aiden Ames is kind of a secret weapon for Texas. They don't utilize her too much offensively, but when they do, she's able to put the ball away consistently. 12-10 Longhorns. Akana with the serve. Been a part of Texas's last two national championships. Before that, was on the runner-up squad for Nebraska that fell to Wisconsin. And as Akana cannot keep that one playable. And Akana in a great spot on defense, knowing that Shelton can go down the line over Avery Carlson. And Emma Halter running into the stands, is unable to save it and keep it back into play. All right, so Geisberger back to serve. It's long. Point, Texas. And All-American a couple years ago, which was her last year with head coach Aaron Mansfield at LMU before rejoining him in Norman this year. Learning a new position. A little miscommunication, I think, on that left side between Burgess and Shelton. Both were in the area. Definitely, and Chamberlain just did it differentiate that set enough. It was high SWB enough for Shelton to audio captured, pocket, not Oklahoma registered. Could have gotten a nice handle on that as well. Timeout, Oklahoma. Texas, after capturing set two and extra points, up by three. Texas was able to claim it for themselves. 27-25, here we are. And set three, which has also been back and forth. Shelton, one of your headliners for Oklahoma. Free ball for the Sooners. And it didn't look like they were going to capitalize on it, but Chamberlain able to find some space. And such great control there by Chamberlain. The ball came over kind of frantically. The DS Thompson was not able to get under it perfectly, but Chamberlain being so smart and putting it deep where Emma Halter is not able to reach it. It's great court vision for Peyton Chamberlain, who can also set her teammates from just about anywhere on the floor. Madison Skinner. Skinner so successful there on that attack, and she's been going to the right side of the court a few times, making some errors. So really cool to see her make some adjustments and come back to the left side where Shelton could not dig that ball. 11 kills, seven digs, four blocks for Skinner. Halter with the serve, denied the ace, Gibson. Halter with the dig. Polished off by Jenna Linus. And one thing I love about the Texas outsides today is 
They're not backing down against this triple bluff. Oklahoma is doing a great job of getting six hands in front of the attackers, but they're still powering through and finding ways to score. So serve continues for Halter. Free ball for the Longhorns, and it's Mariana Singletary. It's been a super sub today. She has. She didn't start this match, but she came out ready in the second set and has really turned things over for the Longhorns, both offensively and defensively, and especially there, just really guarding the net really well. Oh, great serve. Kimoha able to keep it alive. Gibson puts it away. SWB audio capture not registered. That's a 3 0 run for Texas. Such a great angle there. Again, Mariana Singletary is right in front of her. A huge block, but she finds a way to creep and get inside that block and just crush it cross court. Again, younger sister of Mikhail White. For Texas. And both these teams, regardless of how today's match falls, will be looking at those service errors. That's right, and this is about the time in the second set when Oklahoma started creeping back in. So it will be interesting to see if Carlson's able to go in a run here and keep Texas in this. Back to Gibson. Winnis into the block, denied by Chamberlain. Singletary, Kimoha. Somehow she kept it alive for a moment, but Texas back up by six here in set number three. And Singletary working so hard there. She swung in the ball and then immediately had to go up and block. She's up, she's passing it over, and then she's up again. She does the ball three times in a row and just kind of turns around a little surprised that she was able to get that point for her team. Mariana Singletary. Four kills, four blocks, as the Longhorns forcing Oklahoma to call a timeout. Well, again, here's our next out of pocket with Alyssa Lang and Randall Cobb. They'll take you inside the world of SEC sports with focus on football and have lots of fun doing it. Wednesday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on SEC Network and the ESPN app. We're no longer saying Central Daylight Savings Time. We are back on Standard Time. And apparently SWB audio capture not registered. For this thriller between Texas and Oklahoma. And we began today's coverage talking about Reagan Rutherford and Maddie Skinner, but how about the wild card, Mariana Singletary? Mariana Singletary has really stepped up. She went to start this match. Elliot opted to start Naya Button, but Mar Singletary came in in the second set and immediately made a difference. She's blocking the ball. She's so aggressive offensively, and she's just really hyping her team up. She has so much energy on the court, and her teammates are able to really build off of it. What a luxury for Jared Elliott to say, we're bringing you in off the bench. There's so much depth on this team, and you don't see that across the board in college volleyball, but so many players at Texas that can be on the court, but they wait their turn, they stay ready, and they can come out and have big breakout matches like this today. Carlson continues to serve, 19-13. Joust to the net, over to Texas. Rutherford got a touch on the way out. It's 20-13. And that's the 12th kill today from Rutherford, who has been slow at some points this season, but really stepping up today and leading this team offensively. So Avery Carlson stays right where she has been behind that service line. Bit too ambitious, but Gibson is there. She thought she was going to be swinging. She quickly turns into a blocker. But great identification there by Gibson, realizing the ball is tight and that Reagan Rutherford's up at the net, ready to take a swing. So great job by her getting her hands over the net and blocking that ball. See if Chamberlain can go on a run here. Oh, having to... SWB audio capture, right not registered. Get that ball. Able to get the point.
and Martin has improved just so much this season, has such a higher volleyball IQ that wasn't the perfect set, but she was able just to pop it over, try to get the setter out of the system, but ended up scoring there. And one of 19 players who joined the collegiate national team in the offseason. Gibson again able to find the angle getting on top of that one. Both of her parents were track standouts. Uh, have a feeling she could do well in a few different events in the field. Timeout, Jared Elliott, Longhorns. Five points away from going up two sets to one. Let's take a look at that play. Gibson just does such a great job. Doesn't get a full approach, but still able to come in and use her angle. Mariana Singletary just a little bit late there, and Gibson is recognizing it and using it to her advantage. Both these teams licking their wounds after five set losses to Missouri. Again, Oklahoma, that was a week ago. Texas, it was less than two days ago. Both teams definitely coming into this game with something to prove. Want to finish this week off with a win. And so both teams battling hard to come out on top today. Texas went to being undefeated all by themselves atop the SEC, now in a three-way tie. So every match critical. And again, they are about to hit the road, a four-match road swing that includes going to Norman, where these two teams will tussle one more time in conference play. And with the way that Oklahoma's competing today, you know it's only going to be stronger in their home court. So Texas does need to find a way to come out on top today or just gel together as a team in this 5-1. In Singletary, five kills, three blocks, hitting 444, trying to be the X factor. Sooners being led by Alexis Shelton with the match high, 16 kills, nine digs, throwing in a couple of blocks and a couple of assists for good measure. SWV audio capture not registered. Run. It had been 20 to 13. Sooner still with some work to do. Chamberlain, that one hit off the antenna. Otherwise, they would have allowed the let serve to continue. And coming in out of timeout, it's always important to try to get that first serve in, but we see Chamberlain trying to go to Madison Skinner there, trying to get that front row outside hitter out of system. Just not enough on the floater from Winnis. And back-to-back -back service errors from both teams here in this set, late in this set, which you usually don't see. You try to keep the ball in play here and try to just play defense and be big at the net. Well, Texas doesn't mind trading service errors here in this set. Oklahoma needs to go on a run. Rutherford denied. Martin is there for the block. And Oklahoma just doing such a great job of knowing where Texas is going. They're staying super neutral. They understand that Reagan Rutherford is being, it's been a big piece of the Texas offense today. So they are on it. Just pressed over the net, picking great spots for the block. Yeah, Shelton had her right hand there as well, along with Lydia Martin. Rutherford with the full extension to get that one. And Rutherford just responds so well that that shows her maturity as a player. She got blocked last play, but comes in, not scared of the block, and just finds a way to score in the middle of the court. She's just a modest six-footer. Use the full wingspan to go up and get that ball. SWB audio capture, not Can registered. Shelton. Able to get one past Ames in that block for the Longhorns. And what an angle that was. It barely cleared the net. So Madison Skinner was there as close as she could be, but really, really hard to dig that ball. Oklahoma took set one. Texas responded with a nail biter. Coming back in set two, Texas roaring out ahead, and here come the Sooners looking to close the gap late. In set three. Boy, Shelton's eyes get big on that one. But was she in the net? Wanted it too much. Looks like it, just a little bit too aggressive there. Looks like we might potentially get a challenge. She's, te she's telling her coach, kudos, by the way, to Alexis Shelton. She is telling her head coach, do not challenge this. 
Or at least that's the body language I saw. I thought she was trying to stop her coach. But no, they are. So maybe I misread her body language. I thought she was being honest and saying no, but maybe she's saying no, I was not. It's rare. Oklahoma is challenging that Texas netted first. Okay, so they're saying Texas was in the net before Shelton was there. So she does think she was in the net, but she thinks Texas was in it first. Almost always, if you're a coach, you, ha you have to ask your players, are you sure you didn't touch it? And sometimes your players are pretty convinced and they turn out not to be right. This is the rare time where a player says, no, 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 I'm guilty. But there might be a mitigating factor if Texas was in the net first. That's right, but I love the honesty there by Shelton. She was trying to save her coach from burning a challenge right there, but you never know. Maybe the coach saw something that we didn't see at the net from Texas. SWB audio capture, not registered. So original net move, calls but confirmed. Oklahoma was in the net. Challenge lost by Oklahoma. Yeah, it looked like it was Shelton who hit the base of the net on her way up. Again, uh, in Augustuson, our second referee. Veteran April Fricky, our first referee today. 23-19. Great shots, so many great angles, and she looks like she's a leader in this huddle as well. She's coming into her own as a senior, and it's exciting to see. Yeah, Baker's dozen and kills, last couple of outings. Already there through the first three sets today. Those other matches went five. This is one of the women standing in her way, though. Alexis Shelton, match high, 17 kills, hitting 306. Still a dig shy of another double double. It'll be her seventh on the year. Chimed in with three blocks, a couple of assists, and an ace as well. And Shelton, a great player who loves to take risks. We continue to see her just swinging away at balls, and it's really working in her favor. And the Texas defense has been unable to slow her down so far. See if Texas can find the first point of a set for the first time today. And as Shelton got blocked the first time, this time able to go over the block with success. And Shelton continues to demand the ball. That's what makes her such a special player is when she gets blocked, when it doesn't become a kill, she's still asking for it and her team continues to give it to her. Skinner had to make the adjustment. Oklahoma able to keep this ball on. And over the net, Shelton. The violation will give Texas its first point. SWB audio captured, not a registered. A little bit right there, but such great effort here on the defensive play. She sees Madison Skinner tipping the ball, throws her body on the ground, and is able to keep that ball in play. And kudos to her avoiding the lift. Serve from Emmerich, joust to the net, and we've lost an antenna. Do a little maintenance here. In case you lost some cell service, should be <laughs> back on track here in a moment. That's right, I think some clarity on that call. It looks like Peyton Chamberlain is back row, so she's unable to touch the ball with Madison Skinner there at the net. Now, it's one thing to get it hooked. It's another for it to actually be uh, where it should be. Look at that teamwork. There's Geisberger and Eric Sullivan. And again, uh, Peyton Chamberlain asking for confirmation from our first referee, April Frick, basically the ambassador for her head coach going over there to try to clear up any questions as Texas was given that point. Emmerich continuing her serve. And the Sooners pull even two points apiece. Oklahoma nine returning players from the first year for Aaron Mansfield. Seven newcomers, three freshmen, four of them transfers. They have not looked intimidated at any point today. Three, four, Texas, go, 
SWB audio capture, not registered. Rutherford. Nineteen kills for Alexis Shelton. And Shelton just has so much power. No matter what the Texas block or defense is doing, they're just unable to slow her down. And she's not making a lot of errors. She continues to put the ball in the court. And Texas is getting a little frustrated, I, I assume. Her next attack will be her 40th of the match. She does now have a double-double with 10 kill. Uh, pardon me, 10 digs. Aiden Ames. Sheldon able to keep it in play inside the antenna. Skinner. Able to beat a couple of Sooners on the back row. And Skinner just taking a little bit off of it, that play, not hitting it as hard as she can, but going over Chamberlain there over the block. But look at this effort from Shelton here. She is in this game. She's doing everything she can offensively, but also just sacrificing her body to keep the ball in play. So here's Akana who helped Texas close out the last set. Her teammates had to tell her that they had won set three because she was going back to the service line to try to find a 26th point back in set three. I will say, having played with her, she does love serving. She's one of the best <laughs> servers in the gym, so it's not even surprising that she wanted to go back and serve another ball. Being a team player is all about service. Here's Alexis Shelton. Skinner back row, able to find Ellison. Gibson off the palm. And they have an answer for Skinner. It's Burgess at the net, the sophomore transfer. And this Oklahoma block is just really finding ways to shut down Skinner. She's hitting only 118 in the game so far. It's because of the Oklahoma block just being there and stopping SWB her. SWB audio Burgess capture, not registered. In college at Utah. Ames able to get that one down in front of Shelton. Ames has so much power and just does a great job there recognizing the block is right in front of her down the line and she pulls it right back across and Shelton unable to dig that ball. That pulls Texas back within one. For Skinner it's been feast and famine. Aces and errors at the line. Gibson, pass Carlson and Ames on the double block. Winnis, good communication. The libero, Kimoha, steps in. Kimoha comes flying in this time and able to put it away. It's Burgess. I think Kimoha was definitely the MVP of that play, just flying around everywhere, getting that tip up in the middle of the court and letting her teammates be able to kind of run every single option here. Burgess is powering it through at the end of the day. Back row, Skinner. What an effort to get it back over. Now, does Texas want to challenge a double hit on the Sooners? When they range back to track that ball down, was that a second touch? Jared Elliott is going to go to his card. We'll get another look. We have a lot of knowledgeable fans here. Yeah. Texas ch is challenging a net call. I mean, SWB audio the real, the real capture, not registered. Jackson Ellison touching the ball twice. They'll Challenge is reversed. There is a net on number 22, Oklahoma. Well, I think there were two violations on that play. I guess so, and that's a smart challenge there by Jared Elliott. I think a net call is a lot easier to be able to tell. Yeah, the, the net call would be on Martin, and apparently that was an easy one for our replay to identify quickly. That was a great catch by the Texas Texas bench right there. Well, they heard the fans screaming, but I don't think that's what the fans saw. I think they saw what they perceived to be a double hit. Just long. 
7-5 Oklahoma. And that was a close call. Looks like we're getting the green card yet again from Jared Elliott. Well, and again, in the SEC, we've got cameras right down that back line. This should be another pretty quick review. Again, coaches. Texas is challenging that the ball was in. Original decision was out. Coaches have challenges available to them until they get two wrong. And even then, they would get an additional one in the fifth set if we go that far. Simple question, in or out on that back line. Call is confirmed, ball out, point Oklahoma, Texas loses a challenge. Again, they saw enough to confirm it was long, it looked long. SWB audio capture, not registered. So Chamberlain and the Sooners leading in a must-win set number four by two points. And the slide from Singletary, but wide with the air. And OU with an early lead here in this set. Texas needs to find a way to kind of crawl back early and not too late in this set. Well, Jenna Winnis had to recalculate, but in the end, good enough. That's right, it seems like a little bit of a miscommunication on the Oklahoma side with Kimoha and Shelton there, both going for the ball, but neither of them able to get underneath it. Back to Winnis. Into that block, kept a lot by Halter, the libero for Texas. Rutherford able to find a little bit of open real estate. And that's why we keep talking about her. It swings like this, just does such a great job of getting her feet there and turning it so far sharp. It's really impossible for the defense to be there to dig that ball. The block has to take that. Back within one here in set four for Texas. Gibson off the block of Singletary. Kinder, gentler approach, second time around. Gibson wants it again, finds fingertips, Skinner on the back row. Wenis, a laser down the line, it's in. And when is there SWB audio captured, not registered. Still finds a way just to paint that sideline right there deep on the line. It's, it's a Woo. great shot. Right down the line. And Gibson has Oklahoma back in the lead, 9-8. And Gibson realizing going hard cross court towards Singletary isn't going to work. So does a great job of adjusting and using the outside hand of Rutherford on that attack. And Camille Gibson, Oklahoma's top 20 win earlier this year against her former teammates at Tennessee. Whitney Wallace, the freshman out of California to serve. And is there a lift? Nope, double hit on Oklahoma. And we don't see as many double hit violations with regards to setting. That's the rule change this year. Wallace able to get underneath that on the serve receive. Haven't called the name of Alexis Shelton in a little while. Texas a little out of sorts. When is able to punch it over? Yeah, she's still here. <laughs> she's not going away, but 
What a great play there, and great job by Peyton Chamberlain of slowing that play down. There was a lot of chaos going on, but when the ball came back over to the Oklahoma side to put it nice and high in the middle of the court, gave Kimuka, gave Kimuka a lot of time to get to the ball to set it, and then again, Alexis Shelton just putting it away at the end of the day. I'm looking at Jared Elliott down there locking eyes with our second referee, and as intense as they were, SWB the audio captured, not registered. As well. As Texas will come back for the next point, 10-10 from number 10. And Rutherford just keeping Texas in this game. Whenever they need to score, they're going to her right now, and she's finding ways to score using the block, going cross court, tipping. Really, really impressive play by Reagan Rutherford in this set. Team high, 15 kills for Texas from Rutherford. And it's Shelton with 20 kills, 11 digs already for Oklahoma. They'll go to Geisberger this time as it's 11-10. Sooners. And the set to Geisberger is just so fast. She's super tall and aggressive at the net, but the speed in which the set's coming makes it so hard for the Texas block to get over there and close. See if the Sooners can string some points together. And Ace will help that cause. Again, Jasmine Ellison out of Toronto. Oklahoma already has a couple of Canadian junior national teamers waiting in the wings to join the program in the next couple of years. Aaron Mansfield loves that Ellison, the freshman, already in her first semester is screaming in the faces of her teammates getting them fired up. That's right, she's the hype man of this team and she just keeps the energy going. Oh, well, Kamoha still a pancake shy of a short stack, despite her best effort there. Again, her dad played baseball, Brett Kamoha at Oklahoma. Five years as the starting libero for the Sooners. Serve from Akana. Skinner finds fingertips. SWP audio captured, not registered. Her 14th kill. And Skinner just, she trusts Kaylee Akana. She was screaming inside, inside. She wanted the set inside so she could get her feet there, have a nice long runway, and attack high off the block. And that's exactly what she did. 12-12 here in set number four. Texas leading two sets to one. Sooners took the first frame. The last two have gone the way to the burn orange. Chamberlain. Into the net. Eight names might have gotten a piece of that, but either way, Sean brought that ball a little bit far, too far down into the block or net there. Line drawn from Akana. Shelton over the net. Right back to her, and she just has so much confidence as an attacker. Whenever she makes errors, she wants the ball right back to her because she's going to find a way to score. And right here does a great job just going right over Avery Carlson. That ends a 3-0 run for Texas. Gibson able to tool the block, off the block into the pin. Jared Elliott, did he see something? He just reached for that review card. Well, it looks like the original call was actually Aiden Ames in the net. So we might be getting a challenge here. SWB audio captured, not registered. Texas is challenging that Oklahoma was in the net. Original call was Texas was in the net. Somebody was in the net. I believe they said Aiden Ames initially was. No, that's clearly Gibson, isn't it? Not. Looks like it. Looks like Gibson 
finish her follow through into the top of the tape right there. Call is reversed. Oklahoma was in the net. Texas keeps her challenge. Again, once we hit conference play, these reviews typically move quickly. That wasn't true of our first review of the match. Jarrett needs somebody to review that right sleeve of his in the conference <laughs> affiliation. He must have forgotten that. They're in the SEC now. Some good memories. <laughs> what was it, seven straight Big 12 titles to close out? Yeah, something like that. Membership in that league. Free ball for the Longhorns. Winnis has given Texas a two-point edge, 15-13. It's a closeout set number four for Texas. We're going to pick up another victory on its home floor. Have struggled so far this season in, fi in five sets with a record of 0-4. And, and so they need to find a way to power through, win this fourth set, because going to five could be a problem for the Texas Longhorns. Four of their five losses this year have been in that fifth set. The exception was the trip to Stanford. Maddie Skinner, 14 kills, nine digs. As Gibson, a nice approach. Saw the aggressive defense from Texas and just lobs it up and over. And a really great job hiding that from Gibson. She did have a really strong approach going to the net and then last second just slowed it down and popped it right there over the block. She has had a cheat code for gravity today. A block there, Gibson a part of it. Punched over by SWB eight. audio capture, not registered. And an attack violation. Looks like the first referee saw the ball 50-50 and felt like Ames might have reached over the net there. So 15 all here in set four. Kimoha. Skinner from the back row into the block. Anchored by Lydia Martin. Martin, such a great job of identifying Skinner there in the back row. She's not coming from her usual spot in the middle, but instead coming from the right side. And Martin gets, does a great job of closing that block, being over, and just so excited to do so. Martin at Liberty twice was all conference in the A Sun. Wenis. Nice job by Ellison all by herself on that back row when the Sooners have rattled off a couple. The Sooners are definitely coming back in this set. They want this, and Texas was up, but Oklahoma is not going away. Well, 8 Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, right here on SEC Network. We'll have our latest episode of True South. John T. Edge travels to the upstate region of South Carolina with author George Singleton to a flea market in Pickens to eat chili dogs at Holmes Hot Dogs in Spartanburg and to Saxon's Hot Dogs in Abbeville. It's going to be another great show. Well, Alexis Shelton doing some hot dogging of her own here today. 21 kills, 11 digs, her seventh double-double already of the year. Hitting 326, such an impressive clip from an outside, but just taking big aggressive swings. She's not shying away from the Texas block. She's going over the block sometimes, she's going through the block, but just taking big SWB swings. SWB audio capture, exactly not registered. In this match against Texas, it's just her aggressiveness, her excitement, her hype, and it's really impressive from her today. Those 23 kills, that took five sets in a battle against Missouri and Norman about a week ago. And we're in the midst of set number four here today. We're still pretty early in this set, so I know Sheldon's going to get a few more balls and potentially overcome that 23 kills that she had against Mizzou. And she is feeling the playlist here at Texas. The Sooners, just, they're having fun in here. And she's from Charlotte, North Carolina. And a four-hit violation on Texas. That's a 5-0 run now for Oklahoma, up by three. 
And Kimuha just doing a great job from the service line, putting the ball short on Ames. Ames is a freshman, doesn't have the best ball control, but has to find a way to control this short serve. It's coming to her. Aiden Ames, no chance for an answer, ends the 5-0 run for Oklahoma. And what a response that is, just being up, being ready, and taking a huge swing late in this set. Texas hopes it's just not too late. Carlson to win us. Gibson finds room on the back row. And both attackers here, both of the outside attackers, Gibson and Shelton, just continue to take big swings. They're not scared. SWB audio captured, not registered. And they're not striving away from this Texas team. Oklahoma needs a fifth cent. They are two and three this year when they go the distance. An error from Skinner. It's 2016 Sooners. Skinner being a little inconsistent from her, on her back row attack today, but Carlson continues to go to her because when it's on, it's on, and they need it right now. A couple of the Sooners' losses in five sets were against ranked opponents in the SEC. Looking to do it again today. Gibson, Skinner. Good recovery by Winnis after the block. Kamoha goes airborne. Both sides think they have a point to celebrate, and we still don't have a ruling. Looks like they're deciding if the ball went off of Geisberger or not before hitting them out of bounds. You and I are the only ones not invited to this conversation. <laughs> See what April Frick comes up with here. And that is popular decision with the crowd here in Austin. Not with the Sooners, we're getting an immediate challenge after that call. Original call was touch off of Oklahoma. Oklahoma's challenging no touch. Give you a look at home. Does it come back and hit Geisberger on that right arm or not? It's definitely close. But I'm not sure we, I think we have to just see if the ball changes directions at all. Yeah, replay has some other angles. SWB audio capture, not registered. Does it hit her right arm, that sleeve again, on the way down, or even her shoulder? Did it change rotation there off her shoulder, I guess, is the question. And uh, this may be tough to overturn. Geisberger seemed pretty confident right there that the ball's out. Sometimes the reaction can tell you everything. I won't invest too much in her uh, <laughs> body language or facial expressions. We've got some good performers on this floor, but again, the call was point Oklahoma. Looked like it's gonna be hard to overturn. Call stands point Texas. Oklahoma loses their, their challenge. I misspoke. The call was point for Texas, and so you could not conclusively say it didn't touch her in that case. So again, the call stands. It wasn't confirmed, but it stands, and the status quo is a point for Texas. And it's just a tough break for her if it didn't touch her. Sooners aren't too, aren't too pleased with that call, but they seem ready. They're like, we're OK. We're going to come back. We're going to win this point. They're only looking forward here. Aaron Mansfield knows just how close they are to forcing a fifth set against Texas. Longhorns needed that point a little bit more than Oklahoma did, and they got it.
SWB audio capture, not registered. Serve from Carlson, down by three. Gibson packs a punch. Immediate kill, great job by Oklahoma. And they were talking about that right before the play. They were like, we got this, let's ignore that last play, let's find a way to score right here out of the challenge, and that's what they did. Well, Oklahoma, got to like your chances of heading to a fifth set. You're four points away, and you are leading by four. Wallace with the serve. Well, this will be tight, and the Sooners make Texas pay. Such a big block up there for the Sooners, and they recognized that ball was coming in tight and took advantage of it and just put it straight back down Texas's throat. Oklahoma took the first set. They nearly took set two for a 2-0 lead. Jared Elliott's going to call a timeout. Texas will do everything it can to avoid a fifth set where might as well just flip a coin. That's right. It's really important for Texas to show up in this fourth set. They're, they're down five right now. They're having a conversation this timeout of how are they going to respond, how are they going to come out on top. So they need to win this fourth set. Try not to fourth or fifth. Trips to Mississippi State, Auburn, Alabama, and Oklahoma coming up these next couple of weeks for the Longhorns before they close out the regular season here at home against Tennessee and Ole Miss. Terry, she's up there. She's blocking. Goes right past her, and Emma Halter unable to control the ball. Skinner just has to send it back over. Geisberger, wide open spaces on the back row. It is set point, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma was definitely very pleased to see that free ball come back over on their side. They had all three options up, ready to attack, and Geisberger puts it away at the end of the day. Oklahoma looking to cap this set on a 5-0 run. They've taken the last four points. SWB audio capture, not registered. Used to see that free ball come back over on their side. They had all three options up, ready to attack, and Geisberger puts it away at the end of the day. Oklahoma looking to cap this set on a 5-0 run. They've taken the last four points. to see that free ball come back over on their side. They had all three options up, ready to attack, and Geisberger puts it away at the end of the day. Oklahoma looking to cap this set on a 5-0 run. They've taken the last four points. to see that free ball come back over on their side. They had all three options up, ready to attack, and Geisberger puts it away at the end of the day. Oklahoma looking to cap this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hehehehe <laughs>